Falcon Heavy has 28 engines, making it the world's most powerful operation. internal power. Their call out uh, indicating that the spacecraft is now on internal power. Uh, so with the 28 engines, uh, this makes Falcon Heavy the world's most powerful operational rocket by a factor of two. Each of these cores has nine M1D engines, making for a total of 27 engines across all three boosters, as you see there in that shot. The 28th engine is a Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage, and that's what will power the payload to its final targeted orbit. Altogether, the Merlin 1D engines at the base of Falcon Heavy produce 5 million pounds of thrust, equal to 18 747s at takeoff. In fact, the engines produce so much power that we don't even run them at full thrust all at once. Uh, we do that after liftoff. Now, after liftoff, at about two and a half minutes into flight, those two side boosters will separate from the center core and come back to Earth for simultaneous landings at landing zone one and landing zone two, which we have a beautiful view there on your screen. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, liftoff. Vehicle is pitching downrange. And with the chamber pressure is low. for max Q, moment of peak mechanical stress on the rocket. Falcon Heavy is supersonic. There, we just heard the call out that the vehicle is now traveling faster than the speed of sound. What a beautiful sight. Max Q. All right, there, we just heard the call out. That is the moment of peak mechanical stress on the rocket. M1D engines throttling back up. Beautiful sight to see Falcon Heavy flying once again. Now shortly, we'll hear the call out for MVAC chill, indicating that the second stage is uh, prepping the MVAC engine. The vehicle is following a nominal trajectory. We will flow a little bit of the super chilled liquid oxygen through the turbo pumps on that MVAC in preparation for the full flow of the super chilled uh, propellant. Shots there of each side booster on the right hand side of your screen. Next event will be booster engine cutoff, or BECO. That will be followed by stage separation of side boosters, side booster boost back burn, center core main engine cutoff. We are about 10 seconds away from the booster um, separation. Booster separation confirmed. And there you can see and heard it by the incredible excitement within the crowd behind me. Successful separation of the side boosters. There we can see three engines on each side booster have relit for their boost back burn. At this point in time, both side boosters are returning. All vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Good news there, both side boosters and the center core. Uh, everything looking good. Side boosters are returning to the coast of Florida, uh, now under the power of three engines. That's a view there of the center core. Coming up, three events happening in rapid succession. We'll have the conclusion of the side booster boost back burn, followed by main engine cutoff, as well as stage separation of that center core. As a reminder, per request of our customer, we won't be showing uh, second stage views after second engine start one. Additionally, our center core, or stage one, the one you see there, is expendable today, so we are not recovering uh, this booster.
Who's back from shot down? Nico. Stage separation confirmed. There, there you heard the call out and saw on your screen we had side boost Stage back four, burn. Four, yeah. Conclusion as well as the main engine cutoff and separation for that center core and we heard call out of second engine start one. Um, at this point in time uh, with that call Bearing out. Separation confirmed. Uh, we will wrap our coverage pertaining to the second stage, keeping our focus on the All side boosters, to follow nominal trajectory. which you see there, unfortunately, it looks like the cameras on those side boosters are a little fogged over. We heard uh, confirmation of successful fairing separation. While second stage continues on its journey, the fairing halves will fall back to Earth, where we will attempt to recover them using our recovery vessel, Doug. As a reminder, today we'll be attempting to recover the two Falcon Heavy side boosters on land. You can sort of make out some cloud coverage there in the background camera. Um, we'll bring that back to you whenever we're able. Now, in just a few minutes, the side boosters will execute uh, an entry burn followed by a landing burn. Both burns are meant to slow the side boosters down rapidly uh, before landing. At the time of separation, the side boosters were traveling slow enough to turn around and make their way back to land at, uh, at our side-by-side -side landing pads. If we have successful landings today, it will mark the 150th and 151st successful landing of an orbital class rocket. As I mentioned earlier, center core uh, is going to be expended and we are not attempting to recover it. This allows us to utilize- All vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories allows us to utilize all the propellant on board and deliver uh, peak performance for the payload delivery. On the left-hand side of your screen is a live view of Hawthorne Mission Control here at SpaceX headquarters. We're about 30 seconds away from the entry burn for the two side boosters there on the top and bottom of the right-hand side of your screen. Standing by for a side booster entry burn. Booster entry burns have started. There we heard the call out that the booster entry burn has begun. Looks like the ice on those cameras are now clearing. and NYFTS have saved. All vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. So that re-entry burn has concluded. We're expecting the landing burn to begin in about 30 seconds. The entry burn intended to slow the vehicles down significantly as they re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Amazing tracking cam views of the boosters as they return to landing zone one and two. We can see the grid fins there. Both on side boosters transonic. Stage two FTS is saved. Stage two is in terminal guidance. We can see those grid fins steering the boosters for a precise landing. Again, we're attempting Booster landing. Landing, landing zone one and two. With these two side boosters, this marks the 150th and 151st overall successful landing of an orbital class rocket. This is the 21st landing at landing zone one and the fourth landing at landing zone two.
And with successful confirmation of our side boosters landing, that will bring today's webcast to a close. 